God is good and all the time amen amen it's important to constantly remind ourselves of what our God is doing remind ourselves constantly that our God is in the business of healing people our God is in the business of uh, raising people up restoring them and we are going to see hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people healed here we already have seen plenty of people who share minor testimonies um, and the testimonies that we have here you know people that lift something or drop something or fall somewhere but sometimes the small falls they could be very very damaging and we're believing we're gonna see a lot more it is our vision to believe to see people healed in Jesus name the church in China that is exploding today as we speak under persecution it's not exploding because the ministers there are extremely eloquent it's not exploding because everyone there has high connections with the government. It's exploding under one condition. Because a little girl who's 17 years of age, who leads a church of 5,000 people, has a connection with the higher power. That when a general who persecutes her little church of 5,000 people has a daughter who's dying out of leukemia, a general doesn't go to the doctor. A general will go to the very girl whose church is persecuting. With the girl who has leukemia and say pray for her. Or else you'll be, you'll be in prison. The little girl prays for his daughter. She gets healed of leukemia. And he says, I will be a Christian, but I can't lose my job. So I will be still a communist on Monday. <laughs> and the reason, that's why there is millions and millions. There's more Christians in China than probably any other nation in the world today. Though this country is being persecuted. Why? Because Christianity there is not growing even by just inviting people to awesome church. Christianity there grows because people pray and they receive answers. And they pray to the same God. We don't have God number two and they have God number one. We have the same kind of a God, the same kind of a, the same kind of a access to Him. Can somebody say amen? And therefore we have to be a people of vision that this is the place for miracles. This is the place where people on drugs will be free, where people in cancer will be healed, where people who have a verdict of a, of a medicine, medical verdict in their body that they will no longer continue to live after this many years that things will change. And we are also going to raise up mighty generals and mighty people of faith and war. That when you get a diagnosis, you don't ask cancer how much it gives you to live. You give to cancer the amount of time it has to leave. You don't wake up in the morning and say how much of work I have to miss because of this flu. You tell that flu how much it has time to leave. And you act like a boss. Because the boss of the universe lives inside of your spirit. And if you don't practice that authority with the flu, how are you going to practice that authority with anything else? It has to start with the smallest things. You walk around and the next morning if you wake up and the symptoms are still there, say, you little poor devil, get out of my house right now. You get mad. You get angry. Why? Because you have to take authority. This is very practical. This is not something out there in the sky. This is very practical. Smallest things that come against you, you have to walk in authority. You're not weak warm of the dust. You're not a little whinny. You're not a little wussy. You're not a little weak spined person. You are a strong person not because of your height, not because of your biceps, not because of your income, but because of who lives inside of you by faith. The Spirit of God. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? And so we are raising up a powerful army of visionaries. We are praying for this. We are sowing money. We are sacrificing our lives so that we can see, we can be a hope to our city. I am not going to have cancer. I drink water. I exercise. I sleep good, fast. Everything's going to be fine. And so with you, right? But our city needs the message of hope. Amen. There are people who are older people today. There are people who are younger who need the healing message of Jesus. We are not praying for healing for ourselves. We are praying for healing for people who are still yet sick and don't know Jesus. Because some of them will meet Jesus when they will meet him as a healer. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so we have a powerful vision. We want to see many home groups start. We want to see many leaders raised up to become leaders, to challenge in our community, to bring hope where there is despair. And as of today, our vision is we want to see just in next few months, 
want to see 50 home groups being released, 50 home groups being started to be a church that trains mighty generals. That's why these Friday nights things, when we come at 8.45, everyone is welcome because actually this Friday is going to be the first lesson that we are going to do and uh, it's going to be an hour lesson and then there's going to be a prayer after that. I challenge every person, let's come, let's be trained, let's stay for prayer to pray for our city. Right now we have huge problems in our city. Our city is not getting better and blaming police department, blaming the Mexicans, blaming the blacks, blaming the Russians, blaming the, the thugs or blaming this or that, it's not going to solve anything. Now we legal parts will still legal people still need to do their part. People, some people need to go in prison, some people need to be this and that. They need to do their part but we need to do our part. We need to meet together and we need to begin to pray for our city so that violence will end in our city so that people will not die so that police and firemen the teachers and people that these people will walk and have a dignity in their career and will have respected positions in our community not something that they will be mocked despised and thrown rocks at and the church needs to step it up that's why when on friday night turn off the tv put on your shoes you come here at 10 o'clock we're praying for our city at 10 o'clock we are praying for the violence to end we are praying for the families to be restored for people to stop shooting them, the other people for families to stop being divorced we have a vision and this vision will become a reality because with this vision comes also prayer there are people who are dedicated for it i was reading actually today about uh, jim carrey the, the funny uh, actor from hollywood in 1987 he was very poor he was very poor he was so poor that poor didn't even qualify for him. He wrote a check to himself for 10 million dollars. And in this check he wrote to himself for acting services. Rendered, you know, and rendered for acting services means a paycheck for his acting skills. And he put on that check the date Thanksgiving 1995. So this was 1987 writes a check for 10 million dollars a person who is broke a person who doesn't have connections and he has a vision keeps this check to himself in Hollywood and you know you look at him he played in Dumb and Dumber and Dumb and Dumber too and people always have this oh he's a stupid he only plays stupid some of you are stupid but you only play smart he actually play stupid but he's actually very smart and when I read the story I was challenged I was like you know what it's better to pretend to be stupid but to act really smart when you have a vision and you have a check for 10 million dollars laying and you tell yourself you're gonna be a millionaire you can play whatever stupid you want on the tv <laughs> you're not stupid off of the, when the camera is off and the interesting part is 1994 he received his check for 10 million dollars for playing the stupid in dumb and dumber <laughs> but he's not dumb and he's not dumber He's smart. I want us to also be smart. Don't look at your situation today. Don't look at this auditorium and don't look at your city. Look at your vision. Look at your dream because that is exactly what's going to be a reality. Very soon your dream is the check you have wrote for your future and that check you're going to cash. If on that check is I am going to be nobody, if on that check is my city or oh, I'm going to move out of Troy City, this is known and people keep coming and saying it's in the middle of nowhere, there's nothing to do here. I was like the devil is a liar. If you come with that kind of attitude, don't come into my city. I'm like this is the most amazing city. It's in the middle of the center of Washington and it's God's glory is here. I had some friends from Portland who came and they're like in the middle of nowhere, this pure desert, this hole. What are you guys doing here? And next morning he's like man the weather is so wonderful he's like and you guys have a columbia river they went running in the morning i was like guys don't go running it's in the middle of nowhere you will get lost <laughs> i was like don't walk outside because we are in the hole you will get sucked in and i rebuked him and i said when you come into my city leave your portland negativity and depression in portland i'm like try city is a wonderful city that's right right buddy I was like, I don't want one minute of your Portland weather and I don't want one minute of your Portland attitude. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. We live in an awesome city and while we are here, we are going to appreciate it, love it and pray for it and have a vision that we will have a revival in our city in Jesus' name. And I'm like, how awesome you guys are so awesome yet you come to Tri-Cities to learn a few things. 
Because maybe in the middle of nowhere, in a deep hole, there is going to be an awesome city, an awesome revival, and an awesome move of God. Do you know why? Because you are here, and I am here, and most importantly, God is here. Can somebody say amen? amen. Come on, let's put our hands together one more time for Jesus Christ. So I want to see every person, if you're wanting to grow in Jesus, this Friday, 845, let's come and learn more. And then at 10 o'clock, I want us to come for prayer. If you cannot come for six-hour prayer, you come for an hour. Whatever you can handle. But at least you need to show up so that you pray for your city. I show up here and people say, well, I work next day. So is my wife. So is half of the people who come for prayer and stuff. So this is not an excuse that I work next day. You usually do not go to sleep on Friday at 8.45. Please don't lie to the preacher. <laughs> and so I want to see everybody at prayer. We're going to see the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Let's open the Bibles. We will continue uh, the topic that I mentioned last Wednesday. I want to mention a few more thoughts uh, tonight. In Psalm 24 verse 3 and verse 4 says the following. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands, somebody say clean hands. Clean hands. And a pure heart, somebody say pure heart who has not lifted his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully psalm 24 verse 3 and verse 4. this is talking about who can ascend the hill of the lord means who can spend time with god continuously who can have a relationship with god that is permanent and that lasts beyond sunday mass or just easter christmas only who can ascend the hill of the lord and he gives us few criteria. he says that people who have clean hands people who have pure hearts these are the people who can do that and I'm going to add one more thing to it because Bible talks a lot about also it's about people who have a cool head people who also have a head we all have head but sometimes that head inside is full of things that are not good our garbage can has better content than things sometimes in people's heads and therefore what's inside of our head is very vital and today I want to just kind of talk about relationships and I want to talk about purity and we are going to title this message heart head and hands we're going to talk about the three ages your heart we're going to talk about your head and we are going to talk about your hands the first thing let's talk about our heart when I say your heart I don't mean that thing in your heart that pumps blood when I, when Bible speaks about your heart, it's not talking about the purity of a physical organ. It's talking about a purity of a human spirit. A heart is a man's spirit. A heart is actually who you are on inside. It's your spirit on inside. Not your emotions, not your mind. That is your soul. Your spirit is your conscience, your subconscious and your intuition. Your spirit is actually who you really are on inside. What you see right now is a person's body who you don't see is the real person when you call Vladimir you actually and I come that's my body but the real Vlad is inside of this body who you cannot see that's my spirit that is who I am you must understand that we as Christians and we as humans first of all as humans we are spirits who live inside of the body when you grow up in school in a typical modern school today where they teach you that uh, especially intelligent people they teach you very intelligent so-called things that most likely we have come from monkeys and you teach that to a kid who is very young that he comes from monkeys then he grows into high school you teach him more you give him more evidence that he comes from monkeys and monkeys are animals and the difference between monkeys is that monkeys have bodies but they don't have spirits inside so when you teach a generation that you are a monkey and they look at their life as that's all I have is a body inside it's interesting that by the time they graduate they begin to act like monkeys and therefore when you have teenagers you don't teach them abstinence you give them condoms because you don't teach abstinence to monkeys animals cannot be taught self-control animals have to be managed around their wildness and that's exactly what we have in our generation and we have this epidemic we're like why do we have unwanted pregnancies why do we have sexual transmitted disease and we have to bring the teaching in school of teaching these kids that they need to behave and act when in reality when you program a software in their mind that they do not have a spirit 
but that they're only bodies and they're monkeys their behavior will copy that and then no amount of teaching no amount of condoms and no amount of other lectures will actually undo the damage that you create to a person by calling them a descendant from an animal but then we go to another extreme and that is the religion and religion of course we abhor the idea that we come from monkeys we elevate another idea which is also very dangerous where we try to teach people or pretend or give people unrealistic idea to become angels now angels have another dilemma monkeys have bodies and they don't have spirits angels have spirits they don't have bodies and therefore angels do not have sexuality like you do angels do not have relationship things like you do they do not have that and many times when people come to a church or they come to a religious sector they immediately say well if God is, is to please be pleased with me I have to become like an angel I have to be a person who has no desire for relationships I have to be a person who is completely void of those things I have to be like an angel but reality you cannot be an angel because you have something angels don't you have a body therefore you are not an animal you are not an angel you are a human you have a spirit inside and as a person who has a spirit inside you have to control your sexuality not live like an animal where your sexuality controls you and not to pretend to be an angel where you pretend or try to reach a certain state where you don't have a sexuality you do have it it was given to you by God at the day of your birth by giving you a body and as a spirit being inside you have to control it why this is very important because purity in the Bible is always connected to the heart the Bible says blessed are the pure in heart blessed are the people who have pure in heart we read right now that pure clean hands and pure hearts what does this mean that means that your spirit is where everything starts not with your head or not with your mind when most people talk about purity or when when girls talk about purity and they say you know I want to let go of the attachment that I've had or guys saying you know I want to control my thoughts I want to avoid you know looking through my Facebook and all the Facebook recommends me all of these people who have half of clothes missing and I want to control myself from you know looking through my Instagram instead of looking at the popular page which always has popular pictures that flood my mind with lustful things I want to be able to to walk clean in the mall without looking at the girl who Victoria who has happens now have no more secrets revealed all of them and stuff and when the guy say you know what I want to control my thoughts and if you have any decency in your head you will be a guy who will say you know what I want to control my head but the problem with your head is this is that your head only control is controlled by your spirit when your spirit is weak when your spirit is not developed your head cannot be really controlled no matter how hard you try it cannot be managed your first that must be developed is your spirit it is your heart that is the area that must be developed and it must be grown and once that is developed your mind your body has chances to be improved the person cannot be pure until he stops ignoring his spirit your spirit must be a priority that must be developed if you want to live holy or pure in the area of relationships you don't start with a computer software that monitors your behavior from pornographic sites you don't start with going through everyone you follow the post things you're like you know what this is really feeding me in a negative way I'm gonna follow them. that's not where you start you don't block those girls who keep sending you pictures of themselves in the restroom and they keep putting it to the wrong address you instead of their husband or their well if they're not married they shouldn't be sending nothing at all you don't start there and usually people that's what they do when they come to church they begin to follow Christ and they're like I need to clean up my head I need to clean up my life that is not where it starts if you start there your victory will be short-lived everything starts with the spirit your spirit inside what does it mean to start with the spirit that means that your spirit must be strong for your spirit to be strong it must be developed your spirit like every muscle in your body does not get developed on its own once you develop it and then it will develop you once you grow it and then it will grow you how does your spirit get developed it gets developed when you connect yourself with the higher spirit your spirit doesn't get developed when you go 
Ucha. You're going to attract other higher spirits that you're not going to be happy with. And then you're going to lose your spirit, your soul, your body and everything. We're talking about connecting the only a human spirit can be developed under one condition. If it's under influence of a higher spirit. That higher spirit is your choosing. Either a spirit of depression, spirit of fear, demonic spirits or Holy Spirit. But you and I choose. My spirit must come under influence of the higher spirit which is the Holy Spirit and then my spirit gets strong. When my spirit gets strong, my body and my head and my mind becomes a servant, obedient servant. When my spirit is weak, when my spirit is broken, the Bible says there is a verse in Proverbs that says that uh, a, mer a, ch a, a, hard, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. What this means is this, when a human spirit is weak their body will suffer when your human spirit is weak your health will deteriorate when your human spirit is weak your mind cannot be controlled a merry heart does good actually your spirit is a medicine to everything else in your life and we're like well this is true and if you read health self-help books you will find out that to be true the only problem is that in every self-help book the challenge is you develop your spirit by focusing on your spirit Christ tells us we develop our spirit by linking it to a higher spirit the Holy Spirit and when the Holy Spirit begins to influence your spirit something happens your spirit becomes a medicine to your body to your mind and to everything in your life you can control your thoughts after that because your spirit is developed how do you develop your spirit you make time for a connection with the holy spirit that connection cannot be done when you're doing your makeup and that connection cannot be done when you're eating your breakfast that connection has to be done when you are undistracted the connection that brings you closest to the Holy Spirit is when you have the least distractions and those least distractions happen usually in the morning before the sunrise. Before everybody wakes up to tell you something about today, send you the emojis, before the snapchat, before people upload their latest Instagram pictures, before Facebook, before anything you wake up 15, 20, 30 minutes earlier before anybody else. It's still dark. It has a really good feeling when you wake up before the sun goes up gives you this this boost makes you feel like a champion even if you didn't do anything just woke up <laughs> something happens to your spirit when you wake up a little bit earlier and before you eat breakfast before you do anything you get a cup of water and you go into your room why a cup of water is is important because it wakes wakes your body up and you take a time and you recognize at that moment inside is a spirit and you speak and connect with the higher spirit the Holy Spirit and you say Holy Spirit I welcome you Holy Spirit I love you Holy Spirit let this day be under your supervision something happens you walk out of that feeling nine feet tall you walk out of that a giant something happens with your mind at that moment during that day your mind becomes your best servant you tell your mind to do this it does that your attitude is strong you're full of cheerfulness you're full of joy every problem is under your knees I mean you walk around strong what happened your spirit got connected with the higher spirit and it became a medicine to your body and to your mind you cannot overcome lust if you start with the mind it has to start with coming with your spirit under influence of the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen, amen. number two and that is our head our head is something that we have to protect the mind. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 that he who commits sexual sin in his mind with another woman or another man has committed a sexual sin already in the eyes of God. What that means is this. When a person's spirit has made a contact with the Holy Spirit and that has to happen. Now I know some people here they are not morning people. You are an evening person which is completely fine. Make your time with the Holy Spirit in the morning. The reason why is this your mind is a blank page not an evening in the morning you may be an evening person do your awesome activities in the evening but in the morning is when you blink 
and the first person who should write on your blank page is not Facebook, not your boss, not your bagel and not your yogurt. It's the Holy Spirit. He's supposed to be presented with the blank page first. Come under influence of the highest spirit, the best spirit in the world, the Holy Spirit. Witch doctors, sorcerers, people who are connecting and channeling spirits, people who practice all kinds of witchcraft and darkness, they constantly prioritize their connection with demons and those demons destroy them. You prioritize your relationship with something higher and you will see what he will do to you. He will raise you up. Holy Spirit will never belittle you. When you walk from a connection with the Holy Spirit, you will always feel taller than you are. Because when you elevate Him, He will always drag you with Him. And He will lift you up. You will know that. Some of you know what I'm talking about. When you walk out from that time, and I'm just talking about a praying little rosemaries. I'm not just talking about reciting prayers. I'm talking about realizing you're in a room with the Spirit of God and you're making a contact. If you're struggling with lust, if a relationship area in your life is a mess, you don't start with reading books on relationships. You start with developing your spirit by connecting with the Holy Spirit tomorrow morning. That means before you go to sleep, you tell the Holy Spirit, I'm going to see you at five in the morning. Upstairs, I'll have a glass of water. Make sure you have a glass of blessings. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. And you fall asleep with that. Why? Because the first thought that will be when you wake up in the morning, it will be the, the last thought that was on your mind before you went to sleep will be the first thought will be on your mind when you wake up and you make sure you make that bargain and you come you connect with him in your spirit during the day when the issue when it comes to lust it will be so much easier when it comes to other sexual immoral, immoral things it will be easier to overcome number two is the head the head we still have a role to play when it comes to the head it's our mind it's what's going on in our thoughts and what i mean by this by the head is that God wants us to protect the kind of information we let slip into our head throughout the day. For example, from going to gym and sometimes you know I mean you see all the uh, all the ladies in the gym you know are not wearing baggy clothes. Everybody wears as tight as possible. You're like geez prophetically a lot of people wear prophetically too like that's that's how I want to look in 10 years put it on you're like man it's gonna break it's gonna snap but the point is this is that people who go to gym and we have a lot of men who do go to gym you must understand when you're working out and you see somebody who comes in or maybe sometimes even uh, some girls in church who would walk in and you're like whoa what is that happening when you look second time what happens is that image goes straight into your head subconscious at first nothing might happen but then you're tempted with another image a little bit later from a movie there was maybe some scene that you should have not watched in the first place the movie or maybe something that instead of turning your head you're like well I just want to see what happens and you saw what happens boom another thought went into your subconscious and then you got those little lyrics of the music that oh my, it's, it's about the beat I know it has all of this sexual explicit information but it's all about the beat trust me I'm just a musician I know about music and this is a good music the fact that it has everything about sexual oh it's fine you don't realize you have the stuff going into your subconscious in the moment of temptation guess what Satan will use to cook up lust in your head every information you permit it to come there Satan cannot use playboy magazines you didn't watch Satan cannot use nude pictures you didn't open. He can only use the things you looked at to cook up something in your head where your palms begin to sweat, you begin to masturbate, you begin to do sinful things and you're like, man, feel guilty again. I should have not done it. Where does it all start with? It starts with this. When a person walks throughout the day and instead of saying, no, this doesn't belong in my head, you're cutting away from Satan having material to cook during your temptation. And during your temptation he throws things but there's nothing to throw why because not that you're perfect not that you never saw anything bad but it just when something would come up you would you would click away you would look away you would say no I'm not gonna look at that I'm gonna turn that off I'm gonna go ahead I'm not gonna watch the movie because before watching a movie you have to go on Google type the movie and type parental guide and it will tell you every questionable scene it has the cuss words it has you don't go into a movie theater watching a movie and well if it's something bad I'll turn away really 
you have to filter that because when you let those things go into your head you're giving satan who hates you with his guts ingredients to cook a poison to kill you with and then you come oh please pray for me i just get flooded with lustful thoughts lustful thoughts you pick up during the day without filtering your head you have to protect your head by watching it's the minor things that when you protect it and temptation comes in and there's nothing to stir you on lust because there is nothing there protect your head for girls you have to protect your head also from novels because gross pornography is not what they watch it's what they read the 50 shades of stupid or, or, or 50 shades of gray or yeah 50 shades of gray they came out you know they discovered that women watch pornography only 20 20 percent you know there's 20 percent of women that watch pornography as compared to men it's very high and they've created and they found a secret for pornography for women and the 50 shades of gray is just the beginning it's a women's pornography that's what it is what pornography does to the mind of men erotic material does to the heart of a woman and men or women who will say well watching pornography is nothing wrong I'm not doing anything bad you know um, if I masturbate there's nothing wrong I'm not harming anybody I'm satisfying my own needs people sometimes say that or if I read that it won't do me any damage or sometimes people would watch uh, Bachelor a famous show Bachelor why would you want to watch Bachelor you have one guy dating 13 girls at the same time that's polygamy and you're watching you're like oh this is so cute what is cute a guy dating 13 girls at the same time that's insane now please understand I know there's probably awesome guys over there but please understand if you watch that like that don't be surprised if the guy who dates you also dates 20 other people the only thing you're lacking is a video camera And somehow it is wrong when a guy treats you like that but it is not wrong for you to treat yourself like that by filling yourself with those examples because if he does that it is wrong but the fact that I fill myself with that completely acceptable because of course I'm not watching it to see how relationships supposed to be done I'm just watching it to see how where the truth is and where not the truth is I'm just watching to see some dating tips how to compete with other girls it's like a guy saying I'm gonna watch pornography I just want to see how God designed a body of a woman it's one thing when you're struggling with lust it's another thing when you're struggling with your head and when you're delusional I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes I want to step on everybody's toes <laughs> I just want us to realize as believers guys this is a battle we all have to fight we have to control our head this is not about wrong right this is about your head if I would invite you to my house and you say I am thirsty and you're like one of those water drinking camels who drinks water like every two steps you need to drink water and let's say you come to my house he's like I just need to have water and I said I'm sorry we don't have any but I still have some in my toilet what if I take you to my to, to my bathroom it's still water it sure looks clean and I will give you 20 reasons why it's good for you because it's still water and it still looks clean do you see anything there swimming no it's good for you how bad do you want it the worst person in this room would never ever in their deepest thirst satisfy their need drinking water from a toilet yet we will treat our soul not even to that level I wouldn't pay you I couldn't pay you for you to drink water from a toilet yet you and I we would pay so that the Hollywood will dump their toilet water into our mind and then we wonder why do relationships never work why do I constantly struggle with lustful thoughts why do I constantly cannot enjoy a marriage relationship I mean it's so boring there's no a passion and excitement stop drinking from a toilet and it will help if we can read in Romans chapter 1 this is what it says in Romans chapter 1 it says because although they knew God 
they did not glorify him as God nor were thankful so this is what it means they didn't develop their spirit by coming under influence of the Holy Spirit they didn't connect with God this is what happened the second thing but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened what does it mean when a person didn't develop their spirit their heart their mind went out of control anyone who is ruled by their mind will be ruined by their mind anyone who is ruled by their mind instead of their spirit soon will be ruined by their mind I had a friend that I went to school with uh, about some 10 years ago 10 or 13 years ago a wonderful guy I looked up to him he was a little bit older than me he did Bible studies and hand for high school he was someone that uh, I was a little bit intimidated by he was a very spiritual very authoritative alpha personality just a very great guy we went to visit elderly homes with him we did you know we visited homes sing and preach and did all of these things but this man had a weakness and he got married has beautiful family three children and uh, he started to work outside of town and uh, I lost contact with him for many many years I won't mention his name and I've distorted a few de details about his life for a purpose and I remember when last year I somebody brought to my attention this person's name and I said wait I, I went to school with him we did Bible studies together he was my leader at the time and they say you know that out of that particular state this guy was caught in the hotel when he was ordering a service of a 14 year old girl and he was ready to pay for sex services for for like a like a prostitution and this was actually an FBI investigation where they pretended to be a 14 year old girl and he went online ordered the services goes to hotel to meet with a 14 year old girl and he meets with the FBI agent gets arrested and goes in prison he goes out of an bail but his picture is all over Google now his background is ruined I don't know how his wife handled it and I remember when I when I said it, I was like the fact that he got caught tells me one thing there are other things he's done where he never got caught what touched me is this is that every person no matter how religious you think you are when your spirit is not connected with the Holy Spirit your mind is crazy and when your mind takes over it will ruin you it doesn't want to lift you up it promises I will gratify you I will satisfy your needs but in reality it's out to crush you ruin your reputation ruin your character ruin your just your integrity as a person and I look at that man today and everything is shattered to live with the background is one thing when you've done drugs it's one thing when you've done that but it's another thing to live as a man who was a sex offender degree so I don't know which degree to live like this all your life is a shame and it's a shame you will out and I know that's not your destiny but I'm asking all of us to understand your mind is not gonna help you it will betray you trick you and embarrass you therefore make it your servant and in order for your mind to be your servant you have to develop your spirit to be your master Can somebody say amen. amen and that is the secret and that is the key and the how do we control our head like I mentioned we control our head by refusing to take the information that the world offers every single day to us into the corridors of our mind protect your head when you walk throughout the day certain images come up certain billboards do bouncing eyes you just bounce and if your eyes don't want to bounce you do this punish them you say turn hurry up faster it's a second look that will kill you the first look is an accidental second look is a deadly one after second look that's when that information goes slips into your subconscious and after that guess what happens now Satan has ingredients to cook it and guess when he's going to cook it when you're the most vulnerable and the most weak he's not going to cook it at the right at that moment he's going to use that when you're tired alone by yourself something else flips on the computer oh and the person falls and the person first falls into pornography then falls into other things and these things eventually lead to other other things until the enemy destroys a person completely watch your thoughts and those of you who maybe some things I mentioned about certain TV shows and everything and maybe in your mind like well he's a preacher and everything um, if you don't respect your soul to that level okay <clears throat> don't do this but think about doing this go drink toilet water treat your body to the same degree you treat your soul how would you feel you will get sick that's exactly how your soul is right now sick the only 
bad part is a lot of people don't care about their soul and they're like animals literally forgive me for this phrase like animals allow whatever comes in mystery they will never in their wildest dreams will treat their body to that degree that they will allow their soul to be treated watch whatever comes into it and you will see you'll be victorious if you don't watch it the enemy will use that to trick you and to play games against you and to defeat you somebody say amen the last thing is hands so the first one is our spirit the second one is our head which is our mind and the last thing is our hands our hands speak of relationships our hands speak of connections that we have with other people that as christians when we begin to we have to set guardrails in your relationships and i'm going to throw a few a few things uh, one is a wisdom thing and the other one is the bible thing the first wisdom thing and that is this if you're not ready for marriage you're not ready for dating now I'm not going to get any amends from high schoolers because I know you have prom and if you don't bring somebody to prom you're going to lose your salvation or pardon heaven. <laughs> your identity is going to be crushed and somehow because everything depends on bringing the most curious girl to prom. If that is really the competition, wow. But listen to me very carefully. If you're not ready for marriage, then dating is not an option for you. You may say, but I'm lonely. Get a dog. You may say that I just, I just need somebody to love me, to just be there for me. Get a cat. Get a, go into a home group. Well, I'm still lonely. Sign up for prayer line. <laughs> if you are a kid, you're 16 years of age, you barely found a ride to go to that little place where you're working in a fast food chain restaurant, and you feel like that you, because you got admitted to that job that gives you the right to date, because in our world today, dating is a game. Dating is the same thing as actually going rollerblading. It's a fun thing teenagers do. The only difference with rollerblading is when you throw the rollerblades off, the rollerblades don't bleed. Rollerblades don't have a heart that beats and hurts and dates do. When you go with somebody on a date, their heart gets attached and guess what happens? Then their heart gets broken and then this goes through the cycle and somehow in your mind you're convinced this prepares you for a better relationship by getting into a relationship, breaking up, getting breaking up. From where I stand, it looks like it prepares you for divorce, not for a relationship. You will say, what will I do in high school? You will do your homework. You will actually graduate your high school, not with just with a GED, you will graduate with a 4.0, you will have a good chance to go to a good university, you will have no unwanted pregnancies, no sex or transmitted diseases, no heartbroken, you will be more focused. That doesn't mean that you will be a person who doesn't have, you know, likes or anything, but you will be a person who is focused and when your time comes, don't worry, you won't be weird. It's the weird you should want to be because the normal is not something you want in your life. When you're not ready for marriage, if you're maybe in college right now, you're saying I'm head over heels with, with my assignments. I just, but I, everybody in college has a girlfriend. You're not everybody. You're unique. You're different. When you're not ready for that, you're not ready for a date. Now, but what Christians do is we sneaky. We do this thing called just talking. When you know you're not ready for a relationship, physically or publicly what you do is you allow yourself to be loosed emotionally and you start to and when somebody says just talking I first I thought it actually meant just talking I found out what that actually means that means we already planned how many kids we're gonna have when I say just talking it already means we already know where we're gonna go for our honeymoon that already means people are making out, people are snuggling together and people are living as a married couple all under the banner of this false notion, just talking. You're not just talking. You are letting your heart get ahead of your convictions. And you got to protect your heart. If you said that this is not a good time for you for a relationship, avoid just talking. That means if a brother in Christ wants to fellowship with you, there is a home group. There's a group text message. There is no personal stuff that you get involved opening up your heart. And the next thing that happens is you fantasize him during prayer. And you begin to go into fourth dimension and all of the other things. Because you're allowed your heart to go too far. 
and one of the people becomes attached and something happens and now you're like oh I need to put my school aside oh I need to do all of these things aside why because we're just emotionally attached and I know I wasn't ready to get married yesterday but I'm ready today because you're attached and why are you attached because you didn't guard your hands hands means your text messages you gotta guard your text messages for most people get emotionally attached through communication and it's not guys a lot of times are awkward they love to fall in love over text message guys love to fall in love over as long as you are far from them they love you the moment you get close lose it they right away just cold feet all other diseases they get and they quickly just lose it and the best thing to do is if you're a young guy or a young young girl and you're not ready for a relationship is this is that you limit your connection with another person to just a basic business how you doing what's up what's up but the moment you start going into deep sharing your feelings one of the people will be attached and then the other person is going to have the burden of trying to explain I didn't mean this that's not what I was trying to lead you on amen the second thing that I want us to share is this is that if you're not married you cannot live as though you are and if you are married you cannot live as though you're not we have a lot of people who are married who live like singles I know a good friend of mine who's actually became just a pastor in a, in a city not from here and he was a fantastic guy he's a social junkie he stays with people hangs out with his guys all the time but all of his guys after he got married were still single he would come after a particular service here actually where he spoke I remember taking him you know uh, to take him out to eat and he's going back home and he's scheduling a basketball game with his buddies after he goes back to his city to go straight to their house he has a wife that he's been married for four years he hasn't seen her for a few days because he was here with us and here he goes back home goes watches the basketball game and I remember when we talked with him later he said bro I lived like I was single he said I saw my wife at night I always lived as though all my buddies were single and so I had to always be with them to disciple them and my wife was suffering and marriage can be destroyed if a guy or a girl lives like they are not married but the problem happens as Christians is when people find a person that they love and they begin to live together or they begin to live like they are married the Bible calls it actually sin and it is not good actually statistically it is not good for the health of your relationship for the financial benefit of your kids do a study and you will find out that cohabitation is actually has a very harmful effects on the well-being upbringing of your children your financial income and many other areas and sometimes I hear people say first of all I'm scared of getting married I'm like okay let me understand this so both of you live together both of you have kids together both of you have accounts together but you're scared of being married yes let, let me understand this you're not scared of going to hell but you're scared of getting married really I mean this is sin you're living in guilt you're living in shame you're not scared of that but you're scared of getting married people usually come up with excuses like I wanted to have a big wedding well you should have taught that before and plus you don't need to have a big wedding to have an awesome marriage you can start with something small and when you guys been together for a long time throw the biggest wedding you can but now it will be a sign of appreciation for being together with one another that excuse has to be removed the craziest excuse I've heard which is still tops my list is when one person came up to me and I remember I didn't even ask this question but there was boyfriend and girlfriend and I was in the room and they mentioned that they were boyfriend and girlfriend and they were living together and so right away they felt this need to ex uh, explain themselves I was like dude I wasn't I don't care you guys are you know not Christians I don't expect you to live like Christians but they, they need words to express themselves and I remember he was saying he said uh, when we got together and the night that we were supposed to sleep together we both got on our knees and we asked the Holy God to marry us I was like you did what <laughs> I was like what were you drinking that night and he's like I don't need the man of God to marry me I don't need the city to tell me I am married we know we are married when love is there I was like wow that's that's way beyond my pay grade he's like what do you think I was like I have no idea <laughs> I'm like so if you have love for your cat does that mean you also I'm like where does it stop 
couch, car. I mean, how far do you go and stuff? So I was like, I don't know. And it's like, you go find your church that understands this because this is very too deep for me. And I am on a very shallow level. I'm on a very simple level. If you're not married, shouldn't live like married. And if you're living together right now, you need to get married. Get married soon. And this has to stop. You need to stop living in a life where you open the door for the enemy. And you have to, if you have kids, especially together, you have to get married and you have to get married ASAP. And you have to allow God to go in there, bring restoration and bring things that your life will receive a blessing. That you will live without shame and guilt, but you will live with God's peace and God's blessing. And one day, when you would, when you would date, make a decision. We're going to live together when we're going to be married. Period. Can somebody say amen? And God will bless you. And trust me, those times, those that six months, five months, four months, it will pass just like this. And once you are together, you will look back, you will enjoy your relationship, you will enjoy your spouse. And most importantly, you will look with your smile to Heavenly Father, knowing He is pleased with you. Not because you're somehow holier, but it's because you're obedient. And He rewards obedience. And He will reward you. If you made mistakes in the past, what Jesus told to the woman, He tells you today. Go and sin no more. Rise up, do right. He will help you. How do you do that right? Build your spirit. Take over the things in your mind and then practically set, guard, set guardrails in your relationship and you will see God's favor and God's blessing in your life. Can somebody say amen?